now, get going. There's a brand new day ahead. So much to do, so much to see. So get your ass up out of bed. Get out now, time's wasted. There's no reward for hesitating. Hey gang, I'm uh, Snorting Caffeine here and uh, looking at old videos. Not well, my videos, videos I find on the internet. Hold up here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, crushed caffeine tablets. Anyhow, I found this uh, soapbox derby video. It was freaking awesome, man. Kids racing down the hill in the little cars they made. But yeah, it's from the 50s. And it's pretty cool, so check it out. Friendly competition, a desire to win, enthusiasm that knows no bounds. That's the spirit, the spirit of young America. From coast to coast, in everything from sand lots to stadiums, you'll find red-blooded American boys full of that old grit and determination that makes winners and champions. And when the shouting and the laughter of the sand lot grows dim, there's a reason. It's because the great American boy is hard at work, inventing, creating, building something. The energy that is forever behind both the competitive sports of youth and the desire to build and create new things is the energy that develops industrious, dependable citizens of tomorrow. Every spring, in thousands of attics, garages, and basements throughout the country, thousands of young Americans set to work, building their entries for the All-American Soapbox Derby. The All-American is the greatest amateur sporting event in the world because it combines both the ingenuity and creative spirit of young America with the natural racing and sporting instincts of boys of all ages. Every boy, everywhere, between the ages of nine and 15 is eligible for this great race. Sponsored jointly by the leading newspapers and America's leading manufacturer of automobiles, local derbies are run in 116 different cities throughout the country. Each of these local champs is already the proud possessor of the M.E. Coyle Trophy. The place? Akron, Ohio. The time? The morning of August 16th. The excitement? The 1936 All-American and International Soapbox Derby Finals. Today, Akron is a city filled to overflowing with a big welcome for the thousands who have come from every state in the Union to witness the big event. For the racers, first comes registration and entry blanks, then sweaters, shirts, and all the other official regalia. Thousands of spectators are milling about the champions' cars, getting a good close-up look. Every one of these cars represents many long, hard hours of thought and building. In every one can be seen the inventive and creative ingenuity of our American boys. Each entry gets his car weighed in, and an official sticker shows that the car has been checked by the technical committee and complies with all the rules. The medals and trophy awards and other prizes, too, share the limelight. There are 249 of them in all. And here are 116 All-American boys that have won their local derbies and have come to Akron to compete for the coveted title. All-American Soapbox Derby Champion for 1936. A few of the champions are taking time out for a sightseeing tour of the city, but most of them are going direct to the Trident to think of anything but the big race. The thousands of spectators begin to fill the grandstand and line the sides of Soapbox Derby Downs. track in the world is more colorful than this, and yet it's just for boys, all American boys. At the top of the hill are the racing pits, where the cars are given the final going over for the big race. Here they are, all set for the first heat. There will be 39 heats run off first, then the winners of these will be grouped and eliminated until only five boys are left. 
The technical committee stands ready on the bridge. Here they go. Look at those cars travel. It's going to be close. Here's the finish. What a race. But that's only the beginning. From now on, they're going to follow one ride after the other. Maybe you'd like a ride down the track. All right, let's go. Looks like we got off that one just in time. Guess we'd better stick to the sidelines. Here are Graham McNamee and Tom Manning getting ready to broadcast over a great nationwide hookup. And millions of people all over the country are listening. Behind the roar of the crowd is the clickety-clack of the typewriters and telegraph keys. Stories of the race flashing over the wires. Pictures, too, both for the newspapers and newsreels. Harry Hartz and Wild Bill Cummings, famous race drivers, officiate at the finish line. Here goes another heat. Look at the body English on that start. But then everything's fair, as long as he doesn't get off and push. Three boys straining with every muscle, living in one minute the climax to all the hopes and ambitions of months of preparation. What a story there is behind every boy and his racer. And now the last preliminary heats are over. Only five boys remain to fight it out for the coveted honor of being hailed the new champion. Onto the truck they go for the trip back up the hill. Away go the first three. Herbert Mitch of St. Louis is the winner. And back at the starting point, the other two boys get underway. Harold Hansen of White Plains, New York, is the other winner. Back at the starting line, Herbert and Harold are ready for the flag. One will be the new All-American Soapbox Derby champion. There they go. A new national champion, Herbert Minch of St. Louis, crosses the line, the winner. But Herbert can't rest on his laurels as yet. Now both boys go back to the top of the hill and get set for the international race. Racing against the champion from over the ocean, Norman Newman of South Africa. They're off! Herbert Minch is first, Harold Hansen second, Norman Newman of Pretoria, South Africa, third. Mr. M. E. Coyle presents the first place trophy to the international champion while the other boys look on. As a fitting climax to a great day, there comes the big banquet and awarding of prizes. Here, every boy is a winner. For every driver in the all-American race gets his racing diploma and among other prizes, a beautiful wristwatch with the derby emblem embossed on the dial, a constant reminder of this great day in Akron. But the high spot of the banquet is the awarding of the prizes, medals, and trophies to the All-American and international winners. And to you, Herbert Minch, Jr. of St. Louis, it is my pleasure to present to you the first award in the All-American Soapbox Derby, a four-year scholarship in any state university that you might select. And now to Harold Hansen of White Plains, New York. Harold, I have a letter here which entitles you to get your new car as second prize in the All-American Soapbox Derby. Thank you very much. Harold Hansen also receives the second place trophy for the international race. And to you, Robert Richards of Lima, Ohio, as a third award in the All-American Soapbox Derby, I hand you here a letter in which it entitles you to take 
or to receive, rather, a standard coach of any color or description. John Tabor of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is awarded the Charles F. Kettering Trophy for the best design car. Norman Newman from Pretoria, South Africa, who traveled over 8,000 miles for just this one race, receives the third place trophy for the international event. But even now, the other boys are working out plans for that 1937 entry. Perhaps a complete change in design, maybe more complete streamlining, or any of many other things a boy's mind can develop. It's a problem, all right, but all American boys, these boys of ours, are just the boys to solve it. The American boy will be hard at work from now until the starting gun is fired in 37. And he'll be in there fighting for all he's worth, fighting with that same old spirit that is building the Americans of tomorrow.